How are you? How are you? Good morning, good morning. What a lovely day. It's uh, starting to warm up now. Oh, let me get my wind mirror in. Oh, we're down the road of doom. Oh, here comes another lovely white car. This car's quite narrow, actually. So, I squeezed through a really, really narrow gap yesterday. So, I hope you're well. I've got a one implant to place today, and then that's it. That's all I've got to do today, stick an implant in, then I'm off for the rest of the day. The joys of private practice. There's the wood pile. You can't see that. This is the corner that uh, you can't see anything around. There was an accident here the other day. Somebody just slightly driving slightly over the midline. There's somebody else driving just very slightly over the midline, coming the other way. <laughs> oh dear. So I'm trying to get an extension built on my house. And we rang uh, one architect and had a chat with them. And they were like, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, let me look it up on the map, you know. A bit curious, so we've got someone on the phone here. Let's go do a Google Maps on their house. So they looked it up and then said that they put together a proposal, a fee proposal, for uh, uh, to come and uh, sort of work up a, a plan, you know, have a chat with us and put together some outline technical drawings, just a couple of hundred quid, something like that. And then once we're totally happy on what's what, then uh, they'll they'll do the full technical drawings and then leave us to get a builder to do it. Didn't hear a dicky bird. So about 10 days later I um, emailed them. I thought oh perhaps I uh, you know haven't because uh, it was a phone call perhaps they'd forgotten or something anyway emailed them nothing happened. So as luck would have it and we're, as dentists we're all lucky in this respect had someone come in yesterday who does health and safety, uh, self-employed subcontractor for health and safety on websites. Uh, well, websites, building sites, building sites, because I'm coming up to a junction. And uh, anyway, so she's uh, put me onto another architect that she said actually she can draw up some proper plans, you know. Because she says that being in the health and safety business and visiting a lot of building sites, she sees a lot of plans, some of which are better than others, and, uh, and obviously deals with a lot of builders, uh, she says some of her are better than others, so she can sort of uh, get, get, steer me towards a couple of half decent builders as well, when he push comes to shove. So that's great, so she's a great, so we look after her and she looks after us. And uh, let's say if we, uh, you know, somebody comes in and they do us a turn which generally they will do out of just the goodness of their hearts you know if I, I have a chat with them and I say oh you know so you're in the building game I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble trying to find a decent architect and she says yeah then that you know this is the guy and then like if she's having a scan of polish then I just don't charge her for the scan of polish and when they say no do I what do I owe you for the scan of polish you say no that's fine because uh, I said, I've taken advantage of your professional uh, skills and knowledge, and so it's only fair that I should swap some of my professional skills and knowledge in return, you know, I think it's a, it's a good way to do business. Anyway, oh, I could put the mirror up now, hang on. Anyway, talking of doing business, we, uh, this year we had a bit of spare cash in the old uh, angry reserves at work so not not a massive amount I mean you know a five figure sum not, not a six figure sum so we decided to um, uh, trans, uh, transfer it into cryptocurrency through it with an exchange so now we've got uh, some money government money held in uh, Lloyds Bank and some 
cryptocurrency held on a, a crypto exchange. It's only like having Swiss francs or uh, New Zealand dollars or whatever. Um, and it's all the rage now, you know, Elon Musk took one and a half billion dollars worth of uh, Tesla's reserves, cash reserves, and put them in uh, crypto. And then, and then sold a bit just to prove that you can convert it back to government money if you want to. And then uh, Michael Saylor, who's uh, uh, head of a company called MicroStrategy, which is a software company that was making money hand over fist, and he's very worried about government printing and government debasement of the currency. So he decided to put a large amount of his liquid cash reserve into cryptocurrencies and made a, uh, a lot of money because the exchange rate is moving and, and generally moves in favour of the cryptocurrency. So it's a bit like, uh, you used to put your money in the Swiss franc and uh, because the Swiss franc was very stable and didn't lose its purchasing power and in fact uh, it used to uh, increase in purchasing power relative to the pound, you know, especially in the 60s when oh, Harold Wilson was devaluing it. And uh, and then it got so embarrassing, the Swiss <coughs> franc got so strong that uh, they ended up having to print a load just to uh, demonstrate that they were members of the club, of the currency debasement club, you know. Everyone was like America and Japan in particular and the uh, UK and, uh, and then the ECB joined the the club of uh, uh, central banks that were just printing money just for the sake of making it, you know, spending it, the fun of making it and spending it. And the Swiss weren't playing, going along with the gag. So, uh, but eventually they had to because the Swiss franc got ridiculously strong relative to everything else. And of course that made their exports un less competitive rel relatively and their imports much more expensive. And so then that's why countries are forced to go along with it. Anyway, the Swiss went along with it for a bit. Um, that's enough to stop everybody complaining, both in Switzerland and out. So, um, the cryptocurrencies don't, they're not a national currency. They're, uh, they've got no, uh, there's no central bank policy other than the issuance schedule, which is fixed. Um, the only thing that really varies on the cryptocurrency is its utility. In other words, what, what it's useful for, you know, in terms of how many people accept it, where you can spend it, how much it guarantees your financial privacy and um, security. Security's not really a problem. So, it's gonna give my accountants a bit of a headache because uh, let's say I, let's say I put 5,000 pounds into Swiss francs, right? And uh, the exchange rate moved favourably in in favour of the Swiss franc. So um, I've got still got the same number of Swiss francs, but it's got the purchasing power of six thousand pounds. Let's say after a year, it's gone up twenty percent. And then I get a tax bill in, let's say for two thousand pounds or something, and and uh, I say to my accountant, I'm just going to draw money out of what is effectively my deposit account, my foreign currency deposit account, and use it to pay the tax bill. And presumably the accountant would say that's that's fine because there's no capital gains tax on uh, foreign currency gains, unless you're literally speculating, trading, trading them, you know, in which case it's more income tax than capital gain. But, um, but, but, uh, because uh, cryptocurrencies have got this unique property of being being both uh, uh, currency and, and an asset, you know, like a, a money and a, and a digital asset, um, then let's say that the accountant says, well, the Inland Revenue regards cryptocurrency as a as a thing, as a purchase, you know, like you're purchasing a desk or or a new uh, surgery or something. Um, so, and you've made a gain on it, you've gained 20%, and therefore, you know, if that exceeds your capital gains allowance, then you're gonna to have to pay capital gains tax on that. 
so uh, if it's a thing then obviously we shouldn't really count towards my profits because I've spent money on this thing you know in the same way as if I spent money on a surgery uh, it will be tax deductible and so uh, buying something through the surgery that's uh, wholly and exclusively uh, incurred bearing, bearing in mind not necessarily right because uh, if you're employed and you want to claim something against tax you have to prove that it was wholly necessarily and exclusively uh, so there's three tests uh, purchased for, for businesses and uh, so they, they have this necess- whether it's necessary or not and that whether it's necessary or not might be open to debate whereas if you're um, self-employed you can deduct something that's just wholly and exclusively bought and they don't argue with you about the necessity for it because how could they how could they argue with a business owner about what's necessary to buy for his business you know you'd have tax inspectors up and down the country saying was it necessary for you to buy that expensive alginate was it necessary for you to have five drills instead of three you know so so as long as it's wholly and necessarily which excludes you obviously uh, gaining any private benefit from the uh, what you buy um, then it's tax deductible so let's say I bought some cryptocurrency and I decided it was necessary and it was wholly and exclusively uh, bought by the surgery held by the surgery and redeemed by the surgery then is that tax deductible because if they're going to argue that it's a thing then it, then presumably it should be and then presumably they would then charge capital gains tax on it if I sold it at a profit but um, but uh, you know but it's being used as as a currency as a, like a deposit account so if it's used like a deposit account then um, then then it's not uh, you know it would, would form part of my profit because obviously I make the money and I transfer it into this deposit crypto exchange and then uh, they're going to tax me on that because they're saying well you know it, you made a profit and okay so you you transferred some of it into Swiss francs or onto a crypto exchange or whatever but that that was your profit and then but then I don't think that they can charge you on ca- the capital gains on the um, on on what you've transferred so that's going to be a real problem for them you know they can, at the moment they are going to f- go down on the uh, must pay capital gains it's a crypto asset and therefore I would argue that it then should be tax deductible and that then is going to cause a problem because uh, you as a as a dental surgery can uh, defer almost any amount of your profit into a cryptocurrency account can by converting it into a cryptocurrency which they regard as a digital asset and um, and and obviously it's going to reduce your taxable profit uh, to, you know, wherever you want it to be, really, you know. It's almost like, um, let's say, take another way of looking at it. Supposing you um, want to put some of your profits into gold, right? Because you think gold maintains its purchasing power relative to government money. And as a dentist, you're privileged in that you probably could buy gold and in reasonably large volumes without uh, raising too many eyebrows. Um, you know, you'll be able to get an account with Metal Ore somewhere. And I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, 999 fine gold. It could be, could be just bars of dental alloy, you know. Now, if you bought bars of dental alloy um, and reduced your profits as a result, and as a result I had a safe full of bars of dental alloy uh, which you could sell at some point in the future and obviously then realise a capital gain Um, why isn't that done more often? it's the same principle why don't dentists put their excess profit into gold? This is if their profit exceeds their drawings, you know, I mean, you still have to draw some money out.
but I mean, if you've got any money, any profit in excess of your drawings, why don't you just buy dental gold with it? Or gold, you know, or... <coughs> <coughs> and the point is, it has to be wholly and exclusively uh, within the business. So I don't suppose you could buy pork bellies or oil futures. <laughs> it's a bit more of a... D difficult to make the argument that it's uh, exclusively for the use of the dental practice or for, you know, as uh, sort of fits in with the business model, etc. You know what I mean. Anyway, so that's what I'll do. I'm going to, I think I might run that, uh, might run that past my accountant and give him a heads up and see what he says. And I can, well, I can imagine what he's going to say. He's going to be like, oh, oh, have you seen this email? Have you seen the latest email in from Angry? Can you... How, where does he find this stuff? How does he think this stuff up? What does he, why does he expect me to know this? You know? Oh. Uh, I haven't put my little chip in my CCTV, so you're not going to get any pictures, I'm afraid, of my fantastic journey to work. But uh, sorry if you've had to stare at my ugly mug for the last 20 minutes. But, uh, Anyway, if you've got any thoughts on it, then, uh, you know, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I think that's about it, really. Yeah, I won't, uh, I won't prolong things. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon, alright? Cheerio, bye.